Good morning, everybody. Give it a couple of minutes for people to start logging on. We walk around just enjoying what a gorgeous day it is outside today. Yesterday was I was my teeth were chattering. I was uh, miserable dressed in this same outfit. Today I'm actually a little bit overdressed. And I think meteorologists it's kind of a running joke to them how many people say if you know we, we have a saying in our town if you don't like the weather wait five minutes. They say that all over the place. All right, so people are logging on. Good morning, everybody. I am super excited today. I have stumbled onto a really fantastic mystery. It gets wilder and wilder. Uh, thanks, Shannon. Uh, I'm, I'm just kind of jumping up and down about this one. This is getting better and better. Um, I've, been out, I've been out here working on the book the last few days. Most of you know I'm working on a new Who's Who book for Graceland Cemetery that'll be out next spring, I think, through University of Illinois Press. Now, the usual thing with a cemetery book is you organize it by category. Most of them like have a section on uh, suffragettes, a section on captains of industry, a section on politicians. Uh, I decided not to do that. I wasn't sure who was going to turn to a page called Captains of Industry for one thing. And also a lot of people, a lot of plots, there are people who fit into more than one category. So I decided to do it what I call choose your own adventure style. I plot out several different routes and it's like at, at this point you can turn this way or this way. And then I just uh, tell who you'll see walking along. But this requires me to uh, use a lot, of, give a lot of direction. So a lot of people I'm just sort of using as way markers, which is a good way to work people in who maybe I don't have too much to say about, but I can at least say who they were. All right, good morning. Uh, good morning, Marita. Good morning, Roy. Good morning to those who I have missed. I'm gonna explain to you how I found one of these. If you were on the Underground Railroad tour the other day, um, this, some of this will be a bit familiar to you. The story's getting wilder and wilder. See, here we've got Augustus Dickens. Now, I knew that over here was a guy named Joseph Henry Hudlin, who was a, a, a slave who got away and ended up working on the Underground Railroad himself. He uh, just put a, on a chef's hat, said that he was a, sh a chef and got on board a ship. When the ship docked in Illinois, he just walked away. So to find him, I like marked out for myself on the map where he was. And he's a little ways over from Augustus Dickens. I found him really just kind of the old-fashioned way of just walking over and uh, reading all the inscriptions till I found him here. But he's on, um, he's got a very small marker here, Joseph Hudlin. So to tell people how to get there, I said, uh, look for Willis Montgomery, who is easier to find. And since I always want to like say what their job was or something, I looked up Willis Montgomery, found for one thing, there's a typo on his gravestone by all available evidence, uh, every record in the cemetery, uh, all of his censuses and everything. He was born in 1829, it says 59. 59 is the year that he came to Chicago. Now he was born in uh, Kentucky as a black man in 1829, probably born a slave. So I, had to, I could only really speculate, maybe he was one of the people that Joseph Hedlin helped to escape. So anyway, that's where we stood as of the other day. <coughs> Here's where it gets a little bit weirder. So I was working on the directions in the book and decided Willis Montgomery might still be too hard for people to find, so maybe I should point out one of the larger ones. I thought, okay, we'll point out Robert Gray, who is here with his wife Martha Gray and his mother-in-law, Mary Ann Stevens, Martha's mother. So I looked Robert up, found, for one thing, he was also a black man. Martha and Mary were born in Missouri before the Civil War, so they were likely also uh, refugee slaves who came to Chicago. Now, then I noticed that they were technically in the same plot as Willis Montgomery. So there may have been some, some must have been some connection between the families. Furthermore, digging through things, I noticed that, well, this is like weird. This is like, an, is this an L-shaped plot if Joseph Hudlin is in the same place? The, really getting out the map, I noticed that this is not supposed to be where Joseph Hudlin is buried. He's actually not to the left of Willis Montgomery on the map, he's one space north. And according to his lot record, his lot record doesn't say anything about him having a headstone, it just says base for monument has been put in place. So we'll go one north to where he's supposed to be, and what do we see? A base for a monument. So this really is where, if the study camp does not like this, but... This, uh, by beyond a reasonable doubt, was supposed to be a base for a proper monument to Joseph Henry Hudlin. So, for whatever reason, his family didn't put one up. He is uh, buried in the plot with a teenage daughter and an infant daughter who uh, preceded him in death. But, for whatever reason, his children and his wife ended up buried in a hole of their cemetery. For some reason, they never put a monument up to him here. But looking over his uh, lot record, though, I noticed that there was one person who was buried here initially and then moved. 
and that person was Mary Stevens. Mary Stevens um, was initially buried about 10 feet away from where she is right now. Now, she and Martha were born, as I said, in Missouri. One thing that we do know specifically about Joseph is that his Underground Railroad route that he was working on was helping slaves escape from St. Louis. So there must have been some connection to the family if he initially had Mary born in his, buried in his own plot, and also if Martha, who was the official owner of this plot, had a monument to him put up there herself. Apparently the family never got around to putting one up for, for Joseph, so they put one for him in their own plot. Now, there's also a few more over here. There's a, 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 a thing over here under the gray marker. There's one that says sister. That doesn't match up to anybody. But there is a woman named Louise Elstrom who died, was about the right age, probably the wife of Frank Elston over here. Uh, she is probably Martha's sister, uh, one of Mary's other daughters. But we're still having to put all of this together here. So I'm still, I'm still digging through what I can. I've only found a little bit about uh, Martha or Robert and any of them besides just basic demographics. But Martha's doings tended to be mentioned in uh, the social registers in black newspapers quite a lot. The, the kind of thing where it would say like so-and-so is visiting so-and-so, so-and-so has so-and-so as a guest at their house. My favorite thing that I have found about Martha there is Martha attended the Mardi Gras when she was like 70 years old. So go Martha, go. So this has been a really interesting thing to, to put around here though. It didn't occur to me that Joseph was actually, his marker is not actually in his plot. It's in one plot south of his. And there's, um, according to the records, this would be the base for his monument that never actually got built. So fantastic mystery to put together. I'm still working on this, but obviously there must have been more of a connection to Willis than, uh, and Joseph than I would have imagined, because uh, certainly if Marianne was initially buried in Joseph's plot, uh, I know th this is probably kind of confusing. I'm still getting my head around all of it myself. Um, but everybody, thank you for tuning in. Uh, this is just what I like to do out here solving mysteries and rewriting history. Good morning, Karen. Good morning, Teresa. Yeah, it is a gorgeous day for a cemetery stroll, especially compared to yesterday. So still putting all of this together, quick plug for Sunday morning's tour, which is going to be the full-length Architecture of Mysterious Chicago tour that I normally do in person. Then next Thursday will be Grave Robbing 101. Coming up next Saturday, May 9th, will be our first virtual time travel pub crawl, where because it's virtual, we can go to pubs and bars that have not existed in decades, uh, only limited by imagination and historical accuracy. Ah, thanks, Roy. So good morning, everybody. Thanks for everybody to tune, who tuned into Antique Serial Killers last night. That was uh, by far the largest crowd I have had yet. So much fun. So good to meet all of the new people. For those of you who are new around here who came last night, this is the kind of thing that I do. Um, and this is what I love doing, finding these mysteries, trying to solve these mysteries, finding new things, digging new things out of the archives. Um, a lot of the archives that I would normally use are not accessible right now since everything is closed down, but there's still enough. So thanks a lot, everybody. My name is Adam Seltzer from Mysterious Chicago, and I will see you tomorrow.